Hyper the template designers. This video will introduce you to more possibilities of designing fashion for disabled people using new templates. Check out this whole new section in the bodies menu. 30 templates divided by men, women, teens and kids bodies. Let's choose the female crutch template to develop a beautiful illustration inspired by Mama Cack's 2019 fall catwalk. In case you haven't heard of her, she was a really inspirational person. A Brooklyn-born advocate for people with disabilities, cancer survivor and a rising model who challenged the fashion industry's standard of beauty. This look is by Chromat, presented on the catwalk fall-winter 2019-2020. Is truly interesting in terms of materials made with recycled plastic bottles, discarded fishnets and upcycled fabrics and also we're going to design this um, custom-made prosthesis that she's wearing. So let's start on the first layer and I'm gonna take a dark brown color to be visible as an outline. I'm going to start with the face I'm going to take a small size of pencil, select it in that button that's a uh, third from the top and start by building a jawline. I will slightly um, I will slightly change the features of the face, but overall proportion is also going to be more stretched for a fashion illustration. So may not be like an exact proportion on the photo. However, I will slightly adjust it to give it um, a bit of likeness to the person. So the eye level is approximately in the middle of the face and I'm just going to um, give a suggestion of where the placement of the eye is. Give this like a symmetrical um, placement and the end of the nose and middle of the mouth. Usually I start doing just these small um, like markers I would say just to understand where the features are without really drawing them and once I'm happy with the placement and I feel that it resembles the likeness to the character I can get into more detail and as well if I need to move them I can adjust them using a scissor tool And not only I will try to get the nose and mouth and eyes in place, I will try to find the structure of entire head because the relationship of the features to the facial structure is also important. So I'm trying to find these um, eyebrow bone, for example, that's very personal to this model the way it the way it creates the shape of the face you can really see it because the face is um, really lit with the light so you can see how the shadows create the shape of the planes of the face so I'm just trying to find these edges so when I have to basically cover um, the face with color, I will follow these lines to create a pattern of light and shadow. As you can see, there's a temple bone and I'm trying to find the shape of the skull of the head. So what I found is that mm, the eye level is probably not exactly in the middle. That's why the upper part of the head looks a bit too big so what I'm going to do is move the eyes and I created one more layer so now the new position is on the upper layer and I'm just going to erase the previous on the original layer and I will do now the same thing with nose and mouth because everything will move a little bit up 
And I think it's a cool tool because you can always do these changes. They're reversible. So you can see how you can like fix your drawing right away as you um, as you go. So I forgot to actually click the upper layer and both of the lips appeared on the same layer. So now that I fixed that, I can erase the placement. So I think this is much better and I can draw the rest of the head. And the same way I will proceed drawing the neck and shoulders, basically an entire body. And what I will try to do is make sure some of the lines are a little bit more strong. Um, when I draw body, I like to make the line stronger where there's more of a bone and softer where there's more of a muscle or a soft tissue. And I think that really gives you mm, more feeling of body, I would say. For example, the jawline has sometimes more of a bone and then maybe cheekbone has more of a like a soft, uh, a soft uh, rounded shape. So I let the line be softer there. Um, it's just a small tip to make your drawing kind of more alive. And I think on the same layer I can as well start finding the um, overall shape of the garments that she's wearing the bodysuit and the dress and I will see if I want to keep this layer as a top layer in the end to give it more of a like hand-drawn quality to my illustration or maybe I'll hide it and um, I will be using it only as a reference for drawing I don't know yet but it's gonna be serving me as a guideline for coloring so I will probably keep everything on the same layer. The legs aren't um, the same as on the photo, meaning they're mirrored. So what I will do is I will draw the left leg first the one that comes to the front kind of walking leg and I will mirror it so the leg that comes to the front uh, is going to be mirrored and the other leg I'm just going to draw it um, that it's a little bit um, how to say it <laughs> Mm, we can't we can't see it um it's like in a, a contracted view uh, because it's a little bit behind i'm even giving the detail of the shoe and now i can take a mirror um the scissor tool sorry to mirror it so i selected the whole area i press that middle icon that shows mirror and i'm going to adjust the placement of this drawing and simply erase the original one so that i can draw the other leg that is behind now i could have left it as it was it just i find it um a bit simpler to draw from a reference if I don't have to constantly mirror things with my eyes so I'm just going to follow the same uh, follow the same way the photo is
and for the crutches I'm going to switch the line to the straight line mod and take a pen so that there is like more of a solid line out there and simply outline the template nothing much to think about Step one done, this is it. I'm happy with the way it is. And don't worry, you can still do some adjustments later. I'm adding one more layer on top. And I'm going to start coloring with marker. I'm gonna pick some middle skin tone color. Pick a slightly larger um, size and what I will attempt to do is cover a lot of area without picking up the pencil because that will prevent the color from layering and like multiplying and just cover it to um, make it sort of quick so I don't have to start off from the white color I just like to cover everything at once. Now here what I do if I have to overlap it, I know that later I'm going to have to create a darker areas. So that's all right for me. Even if I also go out of the borders, that's also all right. I'm going to erase it. I find it easier for me to erase it rather than being too careful uh, to begin with. And now I had to overlap these two parts and I effectively created a shadow at the same time. Which is exactly why I love to use this tool for skin. The transparency and the softness of it, I just feel that it is really perfect. And the fact that it's a flat marker, it, it can create this beautiful straight edge between the planes so it's just my own preference i also love to work with a watercolor brush for like a really soft transitions if you love those kind of um really soft washes of color really like a watercolor drawing that can be also a very beautiful effect this one is more of a like a design rendering i would say there's no right and wrong you can always like you can find your own style by experimenting with different tools as i did because i've done so many illustrations i kind of find found my tools of preference for certain things but that doesn't mean you should stop exploring your way of doing things and I'm going to pick another color which is darker or stay with the same one but like layer it to create shadow. I think um, probably two, uh, two layers would, won't be enough. Although it's, it could be a cool sketch, you know, um, to just even leave it as is. But I'm going for more of a realistic illustration so i will add more i will like develop more of a shadows so i will take probably three to four different values to give um closer to the realistic feel but i actually like how it looks right now it's also kind of cool to have it just a two two-tone drawing it has its own uh it has its own nice style to it. I don't know. I, I also like it. And the face. Now, in this um, in this stage, it's actually really nice to look at the photo if you're not sure where the light and shadow is. Because it will really um, guide you through these, um, these planes of the face. And... Lucky for me, on this picture, the light is right in the middle of the face, so it's pretty symmetrical. But in case it's not, you can always color one side and make it symmetrical if that's easy for you to not make an exact copy of a photo.
and I'm going to move to the next value. I'm going to pick a darker color and start focusing on the deeper shadows. Starting from the jawline, the shadow that falls from under the face, those side, those side shadows, as you can see, they're really deep. So I will just try and follow the reference and see how these shadows on the side and on the um, cheekbone sides of the forehead and recreate those. As I am finishing this, I feel that I am roughly done with the skin and I want to erase the remaining parts that go outside of the um, drawing. And I will start focusing on the facial features and details. Um, if you feel like you need to further develop and enhance the, the coloring of the skin, you can always do that. You can soften it with a watercolor brush. You can add different hues. I've only basically worked with the same hue. If you notice, just use the different values of the same hue. I don't want to add too much color to the body because I want to focus on the dress itself, you know. But it could be nice as well. It really depends on your preference. And as I will erase these extras, I'm going to move on to the facial features. And I'm going to take very dark color first to kind of frame the face with this dark shadows. The same I will use for the eyes. This is just to uh, give a contrast, a high contrast to the facial features. So the black of the eyes, you know, it doesn't look... Um, alien and lonely on the face it connects to the body and it's not going to be too many places just just a few spots oh i forgot about the legs completely i left i left them at st stage one so i'm just going to quickly complete them with the same steps Right, moving on to the face features, I'm going to switch to the pencil and pick a black color. Like I said, the small size to give a bit of a precision treatment to the features. I already have this back drawing where I found the placement of the features. So right now, all I'm going to do is just develop it from there, give it a bit more detail. I like to start with a black color and my plan is maybe to pick a light color to add those highlights on the face and the eyes and the lips. It always helps to reveal more of a character and character resemblance and volume on the face but the eyes are probably the most important feature so I'm starting with the eyes I'll take a light color now and draw the whites on the eye but it's important to actually not overdo it because if you make it white, it will just look flat. Um, I like to use some kind of light gray or one of these. I take one of these neutral, maybe nudes, and use it for the eyes. Because if you use white color, you're going to lose the depth 
you know, of the eyeball and as well because there's a shadow from the eyelid. It helps the eye to sit inside the eye socket. Maybe it's just uh, too much of uh, of information. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess it could be white as well. Really, it, it all depends on the style that you're working with. I am more keen on realistic interpretation. It's just something that I'm used to doing. That's why I think in terms of realistic drawing more. But it's up to you. And I'm just finding these highlights. I will have to probably find the hairline too because right now it looks like uh, a bit empty the space on the head. You you will always see the hairline even if the head is um shaved. You st you will still find it. It's going to be visible. So as I was saying, I need to um, darken the part with the hair. And the fact that I'm using the pencil is just great because it will give it um, a light texture, which will give a really realistic effect of the hair. Kind of like in a hatching manner, I am going to darken that area. Next thing I will do the earrings right away and I'm going to do it in a really loose manner. I can see that it's some sort of plastic or foil uh, reflective material. So I'll use a couple of shades of gray and marker to give an impression of the earring. I think it's good. I forgot about the eyeshadow because it is matching to the earring and the makeup is a part of a look. So I have to definitely have to incorporate it. And I'm using a marker again so that it creates the semi transparent line, it kind of blends with my drawing. Loving how that looks. Now I'm starting to add the bodysuit with this beautiful color I found on the original palette. I will actually take uh, a new layer because I don't want to interfere with the body coloring. And first thing, I just want to create a really flat color on this area. And just be careful to create the shape, the outline. I may need a few, um, few layers of darker color just to give it a bit of volume, not necessarily too much. I even took another green color because I don't want the shadow to look too gray. Mm, just on the sides of the body. Mm, I guess that's enough. So the new layer will be for this dress, which has this really interesting um, material that looks metallic at the same time it looks kind of wet kind of plasticky I don't know but it is so interesting and I'm still using the marker it will allow this bodysuit to shine through so I'm trying to be conscious of how much of this color I am layering and to layer it strategically where it becomes darker 
So it's kind of very quick. I don't have to switch different colors using the same tool, just one color. I can get the volume right away. So this will be my step one. And then I will play a bit with the darker shadows and highlights. Now, when it comes to legs, if you, if you feel like it would be a difficult task for you to create the drawing as if the legs are there, you could probably start the illustration with drawing the legs all the way up. But I feel confident that I will get away with drawing it on top and making it look like it's there. I have a feeling like I'm going to really pull this off. So I am doing like a darker version of this color over here because now it's not on top of the light bodysuit, it's on top of darker color, which are the skin color of legs. So I'm saturating this color and I will leave maybe a transparent part somewhere peeking in between. And from here, I will only start drawing darker. You can see that a little highlight that I left gives you an impression that there's a light um, peeking through. Now I took this darker color and I'm going to find some darker shadows. The places that you see black, basically on the reference, are the places that I am targeting right now. And I will take a smaller size of the marker. The darker I go with shadows, the smaller the tool gets, because the areas become smaller. So far so good, but still I need to add darker color and highlights. So I will start with taking a black color. And this is what will give the illusion of this really shiny feel that right now I am lacking. And I will find the areas that I've already made dark, right, the last time. And inside these areas, I will find these darkest shadows. So I'm working within the areas of the previous colors just to find really dark black shadows. And the last step left to be done are these beautiful highlights. I can either take this yellow and pull it all the way to get the lightest of it, but I feel like it won't be too light enough. So I can do it as two steps or I can jump to white and put it in the middle of that yellow. And right away you have this really wet, shiny feel. And I will just cross check with the reference and start adding these highlights. And also it's important to look at the um, shape of these highlights because they have this almost like a liquid lines, these curves, they look like a liquid. That is also important to try and recreate. For the prosthesis, I am going to draw black shape first. And you see the beautiful design, the custom design she has. I think I will search for some interesting pattern in the library that will create mm, some similar result. So coloring it with black, pretty straightforward job, nothing much. And I'm working also on a separate layer, just in case something goes wrong. See this yellow part, I'm going to 
and jump into the library with this light yellow color matching to the bodysuit and see what can I match to this maybe maybe this one one of these would be actually amazing let me just swatch it first that's not the one yeah this actually is really close to the one she has except I need to fill in some parts so it's like super easy and uh, getting very similar thing right away I will be um, repeating it all over on the same place it makes the lines kind of more bold and I took the marker to fill in some of these areas I really love the effect, I think it turned out amazing. Super easy, like one minute effect. Yeah, I think it's great. And I can move on to the shoes. With this powder pink color. So my plan is to treat the shoes in a really straightforward manner. I just want to add a little bit of this purple color perhaps because I feel that it's probably more purple than pink just to have a little bit of a play of color and define the shape better using a pencil of a dark color really to work it around the edges create some shadows just to make a cleaner overall shape and maybe give a very very um, gentle indication of fingers and then I think it will be enough for the shoes. Great, to continue the crutches I'm going to start with these flowers and I think any approach will work here. I will continue with the marker because that will just make my illustration more cohesive. I think, yes, I think the key to cohesive illustration is the re repetition of the use of tools and techniques. So if you want to create something that looks more of a watercolor illustration it would be nice to have that effect throughout the illustration of the watercolor brush perhaps uh, paired maybe with a pen tool um, what i'm doing is trying to create uh, these marker marker details that look like my illustration is made with markers but it has an element of uh, pencil stroke pencil hatching just at the places that need more of a precision drawing Filling in the shape of crutches, I'm taking a separate layer and pulling it under the flowers. And I'm going to take this round marker that makes an opaque color that uh, is not a transparent. So I will just treat it as a flat shape for now. I will quickly color it in. The faster way to do it is actually to take a straight line and pull two or three straight lines right in the middle in order to color it. But even this way it's, um, it's rather fast. So that would be my step one. And then I'll probably switch to the straight line with a darker color just to add shadow to one side. As I have mentioned, I'm going to take a darker shade and try to see how that would look. I don't want it to be too dark. 
What I avoided as well is making the color of crutches black because I don't want them to be so much in contrast with the background. Since my background is white, that would be my highest contrast. And I don't want to draw attention away from the dress. That's why I made it gray color. Maybe that if you're wondering why is it gray, why it's not black. And the very last step that I want to add is to create uh, some reflected shadows on the floor just to anchor the figure to the floor so that it doesn't appear flying on the white space. And I'm going to do it with marker and a great gray color in a very abstract way, just very easy like this. And that's it. I really hope you liked this tutorial and learned something. Please, um, please give this video a like, ask questions if you want in the comment section and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.